Yeah, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's live stream special edition between myself and the one and only Divine Thought from For All Matters here tonight on this special presentation as the Nonstop Radio Show presents this live stream. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Nonstop Radio 212 or my personal Twitter page at the Emilio Wack Bar to stay up to date with the latest news and highlights from your favorite hip hop shows, favorite hip hop show. Once again, as previously mentioned, I got my homie Divine Thought on the line with us. We're going to open up the lines as well for anybody out there that's viewing or listening and would like to call in. You could do so at 646-397-3510. It's going across the bottom of the screen as well. So for those of y'all out there, if you don't hear me plug in the number, that's the number to call in 646-397-3510. So once again, Divine, what's good, homie? How are you? You know what's happening, man. You already know what it is, man. So, you know, definitely, you know, plugging yourself, you know, let everybody out there know. They know who you are by now, but you know what I'm saying? Any special announcements or any other thing you would like to get off your chest, you know what I mean? Feel free. Word up. So, yeah, you can catch me every Wednesday night on NGI Radio at 11.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can follow me on Twitter at Divine Thought TM. And that's where you see a lot of my podcast archives and everything. And you can email me at for all matters podcast at gmail.com. All the love, all the hate. I would really appreciate it though if the people that was hating would just, you know, Show them go ahead and do it in the email and go ahead and do it, like, you know, in a public forum. Like, you know what I'm saying? Instead of doing all the funny stuff, but, <laughs> like, you know, it's all good. <laughs> Funny yet you said that because I noticed like after that last joint we did, man, like there's been a lot of like crazy things that's been happening ever since all that, you know what I'm saying? Like I just got an email saying that my anchor channel was pulled for possible infringement, which sounds like bullshit, but you know what I'm saying? And then like, you know, some other things that me and you was discussing off air and all the other foolishness that's going on, man. It's just like, for what? Only thing we doing is bringing content to you people out there to not only learn from but to be entertained by. So it's like all that hating shit is just like really unnecessary at this point. Well, you know the biting man that goes back to like when I was on Kawan's show mm -hmm. when the beat goes in, people biting the um the segment that I was doing about the music business. Mm -hmm. They hear me say certain keywords about the music business, saying things nobody else was saying about the business, and then that learn something from the segment and then go and act like they're the ones saying it in their content and on their platform and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think what we did was we made some of these haters jealous. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, we, you can't, you can't emulate a conversation like what we had on that recent live stream event that we did, you know what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, like your experience in the actual music business, my experience as a platform owner here in the digital realm, like it, it brings it together for a very interesting dynamic that a lot of people cannot duplicate because a lot of these people out here are doing their platforms and doing these shows and contents based off of just wanting, you know, likes and retweets and all that foolishness. But we're actually trying to deliver like real actual information to people out here. And I guess, you know, people felt a little way because they can't do the same thing we do, you know? Exactly. You wasn't the only one too, man. I've been getting a lot of my YouTube videos flagged and all of that type of shit. My anchor got flagged too. Like, you know, I got some videos and some stuff and some podcasts pulled down for absolutely no reason. I had to fight and get it put back up because, you know, ended up being that they, they was just like flagging and spamming the flag. So like anchor put it back up, like, you know what I mean? But yeah. Well, a lot I of cornballs, man. I reached out to Anchor just a few minutes ago. You know, I'm trying to see what the what the business is about that whole email I received the other day. And I know I took the Twitter. I was very livid about that because I'm like, for two years, I've had this channel and there was never no issue prior to that. Now, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I wake up to an email telling me that my whole entire channel has been pulled from Anchor citing infringement. Like, that's that's craziness. I try all my hardest to stay away from anything that could potentially be flagged as such. You know what I'm saying? But then to get that, I'm like, 
It's crazy. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep y'all posted what goes on with that whole anchor situation. Maybe it was just a misunderstanding. Maybe it's somebody out there hating. Who knows? But, you know, regardless, you know what I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, man. Yeah, so where do you want to start? Because there's a lot going on right now, you know? Yeah, we got definitely a lot going on, you know. First and foremost, we want to say thank you to everybody out there who tuned in to the very last live stream event that we did. We did excellent numbers on that one, higher than a lot of other, you know, things that I have done as far as live streaming goes. So I definitely want to say shout out to you and your listeners over at For All Matters in the cross collaboration between you know platforms and all that stuff we was definitely looking good number wise and you know from what i understand we've gotten a lot of good feedback from that man so like what's your take on it and what people have been saying to you about it yeah so from what i heard kawan got back to me and said that on ngi radio side that we pulled in a lot of good numbers because he re-ran the podcast and i'll always get it's weird the way that i get feedback man because um I get people reaching out to me in the DMs and I get a lot of emails and everything like that. And in 2020, that's a little weird to be getting my feedback that way, but I'll take it however I get it. Like, you know what I mean? So I actually had a loyal listener tell me that it's a little hard to approach me. Um, like, you know, and I guess that's based on some of my older content, like with the beat goes in, how I'm always at an 11 and all of that. Like, you know, so a lot of people know me from, my older content so you know how it is but i just i w- i'm just trying to get the word out to people like feel free to hit me up with feedback it's all good mm-hmm. like you know what i mean you can do it however you want <laughs> i'm not gonna snap at you unless you want some cornball shit just don't be on some cornball shit you know what i mean yeah, now, let, now let me remind our viewers and listeners out there for whoever is watching this live and for the people that are out there is you know, listening to this on the recap and all that good stuff, like we encourage feedback, you know what I'm saying? Because like feedback from the people out there that's, you know, genuinely support us or they just happen to just be in the neighborhood one day and they hear something that we did together or separately, you know what I'm saying? We encourage the feedback because it helps us to grow and to improve our content. We know what works and we know what doesn't work and all that good stuff. So we always encourage the feedback, no doubt, but when you start getting a little too outrageous with the feedback, like you know, that's that's where it is a, the problem occurs is because we try to, you know, bring what we have to you on a respectable level, even though like our what can I say, like our you know, passions for what we do independently, sometimes you can hear that in our, you know, the respect of our content but at the same time we still you know try to deliver it across in a manner that you know it doesn't upset people even though it does and you know we try to make sure that you know people understand and feel where we're coming from when we speak on our various you know experiences and things yeah and you know i talked to you off record about the little bullshit that was happening last time i was trying to air because me and kawan did a pregame. Mm-hmm for, you know, my my last podcast that I did. And, you know, I just was airing that on Periscope and everything. And I noticed it was a lot of uh, other platform owners, too, Mm -hmm. that was coming in there. So, you know, you know how that go. That's why I feel like a lot of this bullshit right now is just jealousy. Could be. (laughs) It is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, instead of hating, they could actually learn something from us, man. They would just be willing to listen, you know what I'm saying? Instead of what they hate, you should just listen. Yeah. There's an opening right now for independent platforms to, you know, really get going yeah. if they wanted to. You had sent out the tweet. You know, I'll let you bring it up and, and format it however you want. Like, you know, oh, yeah, but yeah. I just, yeah. The so, very like, interesting I, thing, the dy- I mean, with an interesting headline that I came across earlier this evening where it was announced that DJ Khaled, for all y'all out there who, knows who DJ Khaled is. He has a podcast now. I was unaware of that. He has a podcast now. And he just recently signed a $20 million deal with Amazon Music for his podcast. Now, for those of y'all who's been following closely with the whole content game, we've seen what happened with the whole Joe Button situation. And he talking about, you know, his, his situation over at Spotify. We've also seen 
things that have happened as far as, you know, Joe Rogan's uh, podcast and being signed to a $100 million deal. Then we also seen Charlemagne the God and iHeartRadio come together, which you predicted, and, and they come up with this new thing called the Black Experience Podcast. So, like, you know what I mean? It's a lot of things, a lot of moving and shaking going on right now in the whole content business, man. And it's, it's very interesting, to say the least, especially with everybody nowadays trying to make the transition from doing music to doing actual content, you know what I mean? So, like, what are your thoughts on that, man? Well, it's right now the whole, like, you know, I'm not going to get into the world politics, but just the transition from that to the music. What's going on in the world will always reflect what's going on inside the music business because the same people that are at the top of the music business, I've said this shit before, the same rich devils that are at the top of the music business are the same rich devils. They're all in one click, man. Like the people who run everything in the top of the corporations over in the music business, their friends, they eat dinner and shit with these motherfuckers that run corporations and deal with the politicians and like world leaders and shit like that. So it's always going to be like a mirror. So when you see like the world and the economic reset and everything that's going on right now, mm -hmm. there's going to be one of that. There's going to be like a mirror of that happening over in the music business. And that's what you see. Yeah. It's a complete reboot. That's why I recently before that last one that me and you did, I did a podcast called the music business purge and reboot. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's going to take about 10, 15 years to get the new business together. And now you see what I'm talking about, right? Now mm -hmm. you see how everything is restructuring. You see how like music, like it's funny because music in the music business is going to get pushed all the way to the back. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be more about like, you know, you as a brand and music is going to be secondary. So like the mm -hmm. content, whatever you bring around yourself as a, brand is going to be first and foremost so that's what they're doing and they know that that's what they plan on doing in the new age yeah it's very forward interesting forward. especially when you see now that a lot of people is making the transition from making music to actually doing content you know what i'm saying like for anybody out there like it was always said to you like don't always just jump in with you know jump into the music business with the idea of just remaining an artist because like there's various branches and other things that are going on that once your career as an artist kind of fizzles out or whatever the case may be, what are you going to be left with? Unless you can yeah. perform your songs in your catalog and still, you know, get a decent career going with, you know, being able to be on, on, on stage and everything like that. You know, that's impossible right now with everything that's going on with COVID, but you know, you want to have other things and you have seen that now it, it's got a lot of, artists and other prominent figures that were, you know, in the music business that are coming over to the content realm, which is, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's starting to fill up fast for lack of better terms. You feel me? Yeah. And it's going to be a lot of gatekeepers. It's going to be people like you said, Khaled, like, you know, and yeah. there's going to be a lot of other people. Joe Budden sort of kicked it off when he did the Spotify thing. Yeah. And that's like, you know, and I don't think that he's getting the credit that he deserves with that. But yeah. I like you know, and you know me, I like to give Joe Budden shit, like you know what I'm yeah. saying. But I'll also give credit when it's due. Joe Budden really did kick off that whole independent, like you know, getting an exclusive deal with a yeah. streaming service. He did, as far as a podcast, like he did do that. So you know, now let me ask you I with that in mind. Credit. With that in mind, do you think that he also may have kicked off another? wave as far as what we're seeing now because i know the big the big thing that had everybody shook to their core so to speak was the joe rogan deal with spotify like he got an exclusive deal with spotify to come over there to that platform for 100 million and still basically have you know all the same rights and things that he has with youtube but he got a much better and much more lucrative deal and then you kind of see it you know, starting to change the la the landscape of independent content creating. Do you think that this recent episode with, you know, Joe Biden, he was addressing the whole reason why he's leaving Spotify and everything that has happened, you know, behind the scenes, do you think that may have also kicked off another, like, I don't know, firestorm of what we about to see that's laying ahead of us? Yeah, I think it's like, it's almost like a, a smoke signal. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, because a lot of it is pub stunts, man. Most of it, 99 to, at best, 98% is 
is all pub stunts. So when you see Joe Budden going on and on and on about his Spotify deal on a YouTube video, there's a few things you need to understand. Number one, he's not going to say something out of pocket that's going to get him in trouble legally. So he's ran this shit by certain people in Spotify and other places before he went and said something. He's not stupid. Right. Joe Budden is a lot of things, but he's not stupid. And like, you know, so this is all pub stunt shit. As I predicted before, when I said that him and Charlemagne are arguing with each other, yeah. but really all that's doing is it's going to, they're going to end up coming together and collaborating sometime soon. Yeah. And I also, per, I, I also said like, you know how, uh, Charlemagne was going to be probably getting together with iHeart because they're trying to sell over there yeah. and they're going to try to get a lot of black media going. And I was like, you know, I knew a lot of people that was having, quote, urban content getting hit up by iHeart. So what it's doing is when Joe Budden did that, it was a smoke signal for other people that have, like, you know, some kind of backing, some kind of following to get involved and to start, like, you know, finding their exclusive deals and all of that type of shit. The funniest part is an exclusive deal is good and it's bad. Mm -hmm. Because you have to be able to get in. So what Joe Budden did was unique because when he came into it, he held most of his creative control right. when he went into the contract. The reason he was able to do that was because it was something that was not done before. So when you have something that's barely done or something that's rarely done, you can have a little bit more leeway when you're going into the contract. Mm -hmm. Even he spoke of them trying to change the contract as like the first year was going up and stuff like that, mm -hmm. because now they seen how it was going. They seen like, you know, how the analytics were. Yeah. Now, if people are going to try to get an exclusive deal. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that they're going to sit down with people it, like, you know, at big corporations, whatever it may be, Amazon, Spotify, Apple, whatever. And they're going to have to sit down with these devils and iron out a contract. And that contract is not going to have a lot of creative control in it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see a lot of these people, they might be gatekeepers, they might be old artists, they might be whatever, old personalities from, you know, radio, whatever. But they're going to be controlled a lot. Mm -hmm. Their content is going to like, you know, it's not just going to be what they want to put out. It's going to be what they're told to put out. Yeah. And you know, like, I know we normally have conversations discussing the whole dynamic of being independent as an artist. I know a lot of things that's been coming up recently as we, I keep bringing back the Drake scenario because a lot of people, you know, think that Drake is actually independent and everything like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm putting the two together where they talk about independent and exclusive. So that's kind of like one in the same right now, it seems like, right? Yeah, but they changed the meaning. Mm -hmm. See, I'm a big fan of keeping words meaning the what words mean yeah. so like when remember when macklemore came out and said he was independent yeah with thrift shop and all that shit he was not independent man mm -hmm. remember when chance the rapper did that whole bullshit like yeah, whole, whole he's campaign. independent yeah yeah he wasn't independent whenever you can be on saturday night live and shit like that you're not independent man you being independent means that you have no strings attached. You are not Pinocchio, right? That, that, it, the, like, like when you have strings attached to what you're doing, you have special interests. Like, you know what I'm saying? If, if you're an truly independent, you might be a live wire on Saturday Night Live or something. They're not going to trust you to be on there. They, like, you have to be media trained. You, you have to go through all of these different things, which starts to, uh, chip away at your independence there's you're going to start getting into all of these contracts if you have some kind of number one single somewhere just know that that person is no longer independent mm -hmm. by the true term and meaning of the word independent they're no longer independent they have special interests they have people that have already handed them contracts and stuff I'm telling you, man, the music business, I know this from experience. The second that something starts to even, it don't even have to be a forest fire yet. It don't got to be a wildfire. As soon as a candle get lit, them industry devils are on top of that. Yeah. They'll, go in, they'll go right to where they see that candle get lit, and then they go over there and they're like, hey, how you doing? Hey, let's have a sit down and talk. Like, right. 
before you, and so yeah i mean i see a lot of people using the word exclusive and independent but they're not it don't mean that <laughs> and it just doesn't mean that like you know what i mean so what that also does is it takes away from real independent artists and they do it on purpose they use these words like independent so it takes away from the real independent scene so artists that are coming out really independent kind of got their knees chopped off because they have some like you know somebody like drake saying they're independent yeah like you know what i mean and back then it was macklemore and chance the rapper and all of these industry puppets like you know what i mean like macklemore don't own his music macklemore don't get he doesn't get um residuals for thrift shop mm -hmm. how is that independent <laughs> like you know what i mean chance the rapper he has to get paid for performances. How is that independent? Right. You know what I mean? It, it does a lot of shit. So uh, Drake, he's hemmed up by a lot of people. You don't get to have the whole, he's on the, I think you would agree. He's on the back half, at least of what he's going to do as an artist. Right. Yeah, he's on the back half of his career. Also. Right. So he's only got, but so many, like, you know, years left. And the first half, first 75% of his career was surrounded by people, yeah, by people just telling him what to do. Looking at a dude who came up on Canadian TV, yeah. like, you know what I mean? And, and, and being an actor and doing all of this other shit. And he was always around executives talking to him and everything. He's got himself in lifetime contracts. Yeah. He's got him. You don't get to be near Jimmy Iovine and not have some lifetime contracts, man. He's not independent. He will never be independent. Yeah. And you know what? Like, he might have some shit going with OVO, which is an imprint, not a label. I hate when people mix that shit up. To this day, I don't know how they kick it. Motherfuckers get away with calling themselves, even on an independent label. Like, you know, I have an independent label. Like, you know what I mean? Right. But do you, though? Like, you know what I'm saying? OVO is an imprint. <laughs> so it's an imprint of a bigger label. So that bigger label, by definition, will always own what that imprint does. Right. So even if he puts out further music through OVO and he has more... um control over it even if he retains more ownership going forward it's kind of so like what oh, go ahead my fault go ahead. no i was gonna say what would be more what would be more lucrative do, do you think some new drake song through ovo where the narrative is he's independent or like you know his older shit which like you know at the time every little 13 year old white girl was singing mm -hmm. of course it's the older shit right so that stuff would still get played. If this shit returns back to normal and motherfuckers go and they perform again, if he's at a show and he has a new song, that audience is going to like, you know, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going to wait for him to play that old shit. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. You see? So all this shit that would really be lucrative for him is still in all the older rich devils that had their hands in the shit. Yeah. Like they, they still own all that. I was going to say, like, it's kind of right now, it's like, sort of like, you know, how you go to a grocery store and you see the mothers with their children, they walk and they got that little leash thing on their wrist and let them run but so far, but then you got the leash right there to kind of pull them back to reality, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's yeah. Kinda, you know, there's been a lot of interesting things going on here lately, you know what I'm saying? Like, first of the whole narrative with Drake being independent, then you've seen, like, the... The, the, the circum well not the circumstances but the situation with Joe Rogan and the exclusive Spotify deal and then recently now like a couple of days ago you see the whole situation with Kanye West you know tweeting his record uh, label deal and all that shit it's just like I don't know man it's like, it's, it's kind of like a snowball effect right now what you what, what you seeing right now where one pebble has been dropped at the top of the mountain i was just continuing to roll downhill and things just seem to like just be rolling towards this big you know this big con uh, con uh collision so to speak of what's going to happen next in the music business like what's your thoughts on that 
But before I you speak, though, right. hold on. Before you speak, though, anybody out there that's tuned in and listening right now, if you would like to call in, the number is 646-397-3510. If you would like to get it off your chest and speak to us about what you feel about tonight's content, please feel free to do so. Once again, the number is 646-397-3510. Devon, take it away, man. Now, I was going to say, you know, like, you're right about that, but I feel like it's an illusion of a pebble mm -hmm. rolling down a hill. I, it's an illusion of a snowball rolling down a hill and getting bigger, man. I don't really feel because everything is smoke and mirrors with the music business, right. man. If it's, if it's one thing that people need to remember is that when you see a headline of something that's happening in the music business or the entertainment industry in general, actors and Hollywood and all that shit, when you see a headline, the one thing, this is a rule you can always remember. Mm -hmm. The one thing you know it's not is what's wrote in the headline. Mm -hmm. So you can thank the person for writing the article or putting the content out about it. You can thank them for telling you the one thing it's not. Mm -hmm. You can know there's a lot going on, but thank you for telling me the one thing it's not. So now I can like, you know, really figure out what it is. Right. It's never what is put out to the public ever. It's, always always publicity stunts and so the reason why we have all of this nonsense going on where it seems like it's a lot of this you know fuckery mm -hmm. going on around everywhere it's because they're rebuilding the music business man they're rebooting it and they need help so they call on people like you know some of these gatekeepers and everything to go and do what they have to do and like, you know what I mean? To, to, to further the narratives of certain things because they're taken away from, it's kind of like, look over here, look over here. It's like a magic trick. Right. They don't want you to, to focus on the fact that motherfuckers ain't on stage right now to a, to a high level, right? Normally, it's, you would hear about how people are on tour, right? Normally, Kanye West might be in front of a sold-out crowd talking that crazy shit. He'd right. probably have his contract up on the big screen in front of a stadium, right? Mm -hmm doing some nutball shit, right? So, like, it's look at this hand over here while this hand smack you. It's, it's, it's a magic trick. They don't, they don't want you to focus on the fact that shit ain't normal right now. So they're putting all these distractions out and everything. And a lot of it's real, like what's going on with hypnosis, Merck Macchiatis buying up everything, yeah. all of the, like, you know, that's real. That's real. But, see, that's, like, I wanted to say back page, but that's a whole nother site. <laughs> like, uh, that's like second, third story. Like you don't get to see that unless you're looking for it. Right. You don't, you don't get to see what's going on with everybody's publishing and, and copyrights getting bought up unless you're looking for it. So when you got Kanye, like, you know, making a big scene and everything else, that's distracting everybody from, the whole entire music industry selling off their copyrights and publishing and ownership to one firm, Hypnosis and yeah. Merck Macchiatis. He's going to own everything. <laughs> Damn. He's going to own everything before you know it. And it's just going to be crazy what happens going forward, man. Yeah. I mean, writers, producers, like we was talking about in the previous uh, pod podcast, like you know how, like you know how, we touched on the fact that people in most genres don't write their own music, hip hop included, don't write their own music. So now, it'll start to expose those people who we all thought, even though I didn't think that because I know better, but like you know, like who we all thought wrote their own music, it's going to start exposing them. Now we have just today. There was somebody else, a, a, a writer and a producer and all of these people that actually have ownership of the tracks. Unlike the artist, the artist usually has mechanical royalties and that's it, which means performance. So everybody's got to remember that most artists only own the performance rights. So when you're seeing these tracks getting bought up and everything else, now what just happened? No ID sold his catalog, right? Yeah. So, Kanye, no ID. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you know, now some of the material that they put together, he was getting 
so much money for it. Like, you know, he could check his his balance at any given time of the day and know that he was going to get a certain amount from some of his material that now just got bought up. Yeah. Right? So but one thing we know about that motherfucker is he's owned and controlled by a lot of people. So he went and talked to Merck and he went and talked to some of these handlers and everything like that. And he was like, yo, I'm not getting the money this way. And they was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, we need your help. Go out there and make a big fuss while we're over here doing this. It's kind of like how politicians do all that shit. Like though, mm-hmm. like Trump will go do some crazy shit. And then meanwhile, they're signing bills to take all our shit away. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's like that. Like, you know, Kanye's over here throwing the fuss. Meanwhile, Merck is buying up everybody's shit. Before you know it, he's going to own everything. Yeah. It's even ironic that, you know, speaking of this dude, like, Kanye actually mentioned him, like, I don't know if it was a few yeah. hours ago or, like, a day or two ago, like, you know, in the tweet or whatever. It's crazy yeah, it that, that, this name, yeah, that this name is surfacing, because I remember I came to you um a few weeks ago, like, even last month, as a matter of fact. I asked you, did you hear about the situation with RZA selling his, you know, uh, copyrights and publishing and shit like that to this company and everything? And now you're seeing a whole lot of other artists that's going the same route and selling off their copyrights and they're publishing. Like, we had a, a, a strange time, I should say, in the music business right now where you got all these artists that are selling off their rights and everything. Like, that shit just, it, 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 it puzzles me, to be honest with you, man. Yeah, and there's a reason why, you know, Kanye is over there throwing the fuss because when you have that kind of distraction from... Right now, people are getting exposed for not writing their own music, and people might not realize that. So when you see writer of some song, right, writer known for writing song this, this, and this, right, just sold their rights to Merck, that Kanye is doing his scene over here, taken away from the fact that you like, hold on, a writer wrote this song. I thought that the artist I like wrote that song, right? Mm -hmm. So it's taken away, it's distracting you from watching the headlines. (laughs) <laughs> so so everybody can keep their illusions of their favorite artists actually writing their own songs. Yeah. It's all it's all planned. It's all planned. Kanye knows Merck very well. Mm-hmm. Merck Macchiatis used to manage Beyonce. He is one of the when you brought it up to me and you was like, yo, do you know this motherfucker? Like and I'm like and I was trying to steer away from the music content for a while but you know what i mean but then when you brought it to my attention i'm like yeah that's that's merc i know who he is he's one of them devils that buys up publishing and 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 copyrights he floats around major labels and waits for before covid it was a little harder for him what he used to have to do was go and wait for like a a scandal or something Mm -hmm. where somebody was less marketable for a minute and then they would make less money and then he would just be like I can go buy your publishing and then they would be like okay here here because the one thing that artists didn't want to do is lose their way of life they wanted to keep their mansion they wanted to stay where they were staying and buy the shit they was buying so they would just sell off some of their publishing to Merck mm-hmm. but now after COVID post COVID it's it's a fucking yard sale yeah, for Merck it is. it's like you know it's, it's a yard like- sale it's almost like one of them things where it's just, you know, like it's like monopoly with artists in their publishing right now. Like you're just going around the board and buying. Because up everybody's copy. broke. Yeah. Everybody's broke. I've been saying it for years and nobody believed me. Now, do you believe me? Remember when I said this on the beat goes in however many years ago? I said, artists don't own their own shit. They don't write their own shit and they don't own their own shit. They only can get money on the back end of performance Mm -hmm. and now that they can't perform you see what's happening now do you believe me you know what i mean how many fucking times do i gotta be right Mm -hmm. like you know what i'm saying jesus christ how many and back then i used to get motherfuckers arguing with me no 
this motherfucker owes their music and this motherfucker. I'm like, okay, man, whatever. Yeah, I only spent 20 years in the business and worked inside and had a job inside the business and actually talked to some of these people about it. But yeah, I'm sure you're right because you have a SoundCloud song up. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, like, you have your new track available on all platforms. So I'm sure you know exactly what's going on in the music business. But you see how I've been right and what's happening. Like, you know what I mean? Is proving the point. And when Kanye, I'm going to just say it, man. When Kanye was tweeting them contracts, I sat down and actually signed record contracts before. I sat down with other artists, with labels before. And I'm talking major labels. Mm -hmm. And I sat down with artists from major labels before and looked at their contracts and different things. I know what major label contracts look, look like. I know the process. I know all that. That contract wasn't, it was less than real. <laughs> and for people out there that may have still not believe anything that we're talking about here tonight, you can look it up. Like the information is definitely out there. Like that's how I found out this whole situation is because I actually just was, you know, scrolling through and just looking at various articles and came across the article saying that, you know, X, Y, and Z sold their publishing to this company and so forth. You know what I'm saying? Like it, <laughs> The, this whole COVID thing has really changed the scope or the dynamic of the music business for artists because, as you said before, like a lot, and even myself, I know, even though I never had any kind of success as an artist myself in the music business, I know that artists don't make a lot of money off of their record deals per se. They don't make a lot of money off of their, you know, their, their music itself. They make music, I mean, they make money off of being able to perform and being able to go on tour and being able to sell merchandise and other, you know, endorsements that they get along the way. They don't really make a lot of money off of their music business contract and stuff like that. So it's like when this whole COVID thing hit and now people are having to perform from their living rooms and if you see things like with the verses and everything like that, people have been trying to find other creative ways. And as you see now, Facebook is putting the clamps on that. There's no more, you know, live streaming music on Facebook. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, this is like the last resort for some of these artists, man. Yeah, we're going to be like one step away from artists, grown-ass men making OnlyFans. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. We already at that point, to be honest with you. Like, we already at that point because I've already seen where you have grown-ass men out here making OnlyFans. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not knocking it like you do what you do, brother. But at the end of the day, like, <laughs> ain't no way in hell I'm gonna compromise my integrity to make an OnlyFans page. I'd rather get out there and do something else than to see myself with an OnlyFans page. Now, if I was to ever do that, that was that would just be solely for selling my own content. As far as you know, the nonstop radio show, EJP Entertainment, anything involving that brand. That will be featured on there. It won't be me showing my penis on, on, fucking, on fucking OnlyFans. No knocking anybody that does that because I've seen a lot of people making a lot of money over doing what they do on OnlyFans, but you won't see Emilio Ekbar doing that shit. Not at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, shit, some of these motherfuckers might not got no choice, though, because they saying, was like, man. you know... You can't get no money when you're performing on IG. You yeah. like you're not getting the ticket sales. Like that's how motherfuckers was making their money was yeah. touring and you know what I mean. And and a lot of them wasn't even getting the money from the merchandise. I mean, because the merchandise is part of a 360 deal, right? I mean, not even to take nothing away from the people that has been performing on Facebook and Instagram because it kind of you know kept people in high spirits as the pandemic raged doing and everything like that but you already knew it and i remember we had that conversation before and i remember you did a episode of for all matters where you address the situation whereas you know what i'm saying it, they're gonna find a way to come in there and shut that shit down you know what i'm saying yeah. and that's exactly what you're seeing now with facebook they just put out a uh, update of their you know their user policy banning the fact that they're taking away, you know, live streams now. And then Instagram, like, they only allow you to go live for, like, so long. And then after a while, like, they kick you off. And then if they feel like they, you know, got possible copyright issues within the music that you're playing, they're going to, you know, delete it and not even going to give you a chance to post it. Because I've personally myself 
have experienced that. So it's like they coming in and they shutting that shit down. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like people got to get creative and find other solutions, so to speak, in order to be able to make some kind of money off of this whole thing with the music business now. Yeah, that's why you're seeing a yard sale with people's copyrights and, and uh, like, you know, publishing and everything like that. And for the people who didn't hear the last episode that me and you did, mm -hmm. the reason why... So the question would be from a lot of people that are scared to, like, you know, ask the question, it would be like, well, what's the... What's the point of these artists getting a like? Why would Merck buy the pub and the copyrights off the artists? Like, what would he gain that from it that they can't gain? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there's a lot of it is that Merck can go and open up doors that that artist can't mm -hmm. because Merck has been in the music business forever and made all of the right friends in all of the top places in the business. He's notorious in them rooms when it comes to being able to broker deals and different things. He is a devil. So mm -hmm. when it comes to all of that, he can get music placement in things that somebody even like Kanye can't. Mm -hmm. And I mean that. Like somebody that even like Hove can't. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, that's why. That's the incentive for Merck to do it because he can take popular music that everybody knows and recognizes and go and flip it, like, you know, quadruple. He can get quadruple what somebody could get, and maybe that's even on the low end. Mm -hmm. like so that's said, the point of it all. Like we said, what, uh, the last time, you know, you start hearing fucking Wu-Tang Clan on, you know, Frosted Flakes commercials. Frosted Flakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Frosted Flakes. Frosted yeah. And, and, and different other, like, you know, like Disney, like, you know, Merck can talk to Disney. When you, and when you, I know you just thought about, like, when I say Disney, people might think of Mickey Mouse and shit. No, nah. Disney owns everything, man. Disney owns Fox. Like, you know, they own, like, everything. Yeah. So when it comes to like, you know, Merck being able to get placement, I'm talking about in, in just Disney owns like broadcasting, like TV networks, all that type of shit, yeah. like movie, movie studios, all that kind of shit. Like it, it's a big deal when Merck can get placement for shit. And then it's going to be real fucked up because when you hear these artists and all these new places, just know that artists ain't getting paid for it. Yeah. Now it's Merck. That's, that's crazy right there like and people fail to realize that disney's one of the biggest fucking conglomerates out there you know what i'm saying especially in the music and entertainment business you know what i'm saying like disney is like what in the top five as far as i'm concerned like they up there pretty high as yeah, far as top two the, top two he might be the first yeah like, like you know, for, honestly because they because they bought 21st century fox 20, and, and they bought uh they bought everything, man. Yeah. Like, they're almost a monopoly. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's, it's, and Merck is good friends with people in Disney. So when it comes to him buying up all of these songs and everything else, he's going to be able to play some in like different films and blockbuster stuff and everything else. And he's going to get so paid off of that publishing. Can you fucking And imagine, owning them copyrights. Could you fucking imagine? Watching Winnie the Pooh, and you see this big motherfucker come around talking about some old uh, "I came to bring the pain" or some shit. Like exactly, <laughs> and that yup, and that's what's gonna happen. That is exactly the kind of shit that's gonna happen. Like you know, it's literally gonna be. It's a purge happening right now. That's why I said that in, in my podcast. It's yeah. a music business purge, and it's a reboot that's happening. Yeah, like you know, and it's a bunch of smoke and mirrors. That contract that. Kanye tweeted was fake. That shit wasn't real. Like, you know, and everybody's eating it up. Like, you know, oh, poor Kanye, look at the fucking contract and all of this. Like, you know, and it's like, come on, man. Motherfuckers yeah. is just believing it because they never sat down with a contract before. They don't know what a real music business contract looks like. I, it took me 10 seconds to look at that contract and be like, oh, this is a pub stunt. It's a fucking pub stunt because the contract ain't real. Yeah. So, I remember, I remember, like a, a few years ago, it was wasn't Death, uh, Death Row. They was bought out by some kind of like toy company or something like that. Yeah, 
some shit like that. Yeah, and it's also funny, like, you know, how I know I've heard you mention Tegna and Tencent and stuff like that. And I'm starting to hear them, their name come up on, like, mainstream media now as far as, you know, the moves that they're making within the music industry and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, because Tencent is getting more and more ownership of the major labels. They had a worm contract, so they only had, like, 5% of UMG for so many years, but the contract stated that after, I forget, it was like after 15 or 20 years that they would start the their shareholder, like their partnership, their amount of shares that they would have in these major labels would grow. Mm -hmm. And now it's growing exponentially. So like instead of like, you know, five turned to 10, 10 turned to 25, 25 turned to 65. You know what I mean? It doesn't go up by five. Like, it, it's crazy. They're, they almost own all of it now with the major labels. And when you have Tencent and Byte Dance, I just saw some shit on a trend today that said um, that uh, TikTok is going to be Man. banned from the... Yeah, trust me. Here's another thing I'm going to be right about. It's going to be a co-ownership. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have Microsoft or something like that owning the U.S. stakes of TikTok. And then you're going to still see ByteDance as a co-owner. Right. That's what's going to happen. And the U.S. is going to make it seem, Trump will probably talk all this shit and make it seem like the U.S. like you know, really did a buyout and all of that. But trust me, ByteDance is still going to be getting quiet money on that. And yeah. ByteDance is a sister company of Tencent which is a sister company of Tegna, like, you know, that's just the way it is. I don't see so, yeah. TikTok going anywhere anytime soon within the United States, even if they are trying to ban TikTok from, you know, the United States and everything like that. I really do see, like, it's, it, if they do pull that off, what I think will happen is it would be more so, it would be under the guise of something different. It won't be TikTok, as you know it, it'd probably be something else. You know what I'm saying? It'd be probably brand branded differently, but be all the same people and just have a different name over top of it saying, like, this is the new counterpart to what TikTok platform is. We have this now. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, like how you see um, YouTube now, how they got stories where you can post, like, little stories and stuff, like how you can on Instagram and shit. It's like you're doing yeah. the same thing now on YouTube. I see the same thing that's going to happen with TikTok is going to become the same thing. They're going to rebrand it as something different. And it's going to be the U.S. counterpart to what TikTok is. Yeah, and China's still going to be eating on it. Yeah. There's, they're, go they're going to have a share. They're going to have shares in it. No matter what, China's not giving up the shares on it yeah. unless they get paid. Because that's all China really wants to do is go and get ownership. That's what China likes to do. They go and they grab up a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They like to grab up assets china's always been like that just in politics and everything too like in the world they, they like to grab up valuable assets and then like grow them and then like you know it's like planting a seed and then growing it and then they sell it for way more after they grow and harvest like, like you know what i mean that's what they've been doing with tiktok mm -hmm. i predicted that in the becos and i said that's going to be the new ig and i said that like what three years ago and I said, watch, watch TikTok. That's going to be the next thing. Boom, now, it was. To be honest with you, like me, I just recently heard about TikTok because I don't really like venture into a lot of these new apps that come out. You know what I'm saying? Especially with all the security issues that a lot of these apps have. I don't really, you know, like indulge myself in trying to use a lot of these new like social media platforms or apps such as, you know, a TikTok or a Patreon and stuff like that because of, you know, those, those type of issues. But it's like, what it comes down to what is, what it's looking like is they're trying to control all that stuff now to the point where you're not even going to be able to post any kind of content on them unless it's like original content or something that's not music business related. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, they were just talking a lot of shit about how, uh, TikTok was getting involved in the music business right before this happened too. Mm -hmm. Like they was doing music streaming or something like that. Yeah, I it, it, that. yeah, man. It's all this is all just smoke and mirrors 
it's because there's a lot of shit going on with the politics and everything right now, man. That's what this is. Like the politics in the world will always reflect the politics in the entertainment business. Mm. It will always be that way, man. It will always fucking be a mirror. So when you're looking at what's going on right now, it's a reset and we're just going to keep seeing this kind of shit happening. But yeah. I think, you know, if we want to talk about, so we see all this happening, right? And and we talked about the music business dilemma and then the solution mm -hmm. in the last podcast. So it's like, so then what are we going to do about it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what are we going to do about all of this that is going on right now? Like, you know, as independent creators, as artists, platform owners, network owners, whatever. So now we see all of what's going on. What are we going to do? Are we going to try to copy them? Because how did that work? Like, you know, over the years, we see what happens when motherfuckers just try to copy mm -hmm. what the mainstream is doing, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, that's a good discussion because when I seen your tweet, you were like, are we just going to keep like the competition going up on the indie level or what are we going to do? Yo, I bet you that tweet, I'll put that tweet out there and I bet you barely, I, I probably only one person probably liked that tweet or probably, you know, you get a lot of like, you know, impressions on it, but I don't think a lot of people really understands what that means. And it's like, you know, like I said, like you seen that, you know, Khaled just got 20 million for his podcast. You see that, you know, Joe Rogan got the hundred mil you know, exclusive from Spotify. And then you see that, you know, Charlemagne and fucking iHeart, they coming together with this new black podcast experience thing. I'm like, what are we as independent content creators going to do instead of always trying to compete with one another in this new lane that they're creating as far as the music business is concerned? I mean, basically, like, they're taking away your, 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 things like streaming and stuff like that. They're taking away things as far as, you know, being able to post music on various sites without being flagged for copyright infringement and stuff like that. So it's like, what, what option are people like you and myself and other people out there that have platforms or call themselves content creators? It's like, what else is left for us to do? And for anybody out there watching, I'm seeing we're starting to get a, a lot more people filling up the room. If you'd like to join in on this discussion, feel free to call us at 646-397-3510. We're here talking about the music business once again. Me and my homie Divine Thought from All Matters, for All Matters, we are doing this live here on Periscope. So definitely hit us up, 646-397-3510. But to continue on what I was saying, like, what is it that we as independent creators want to do to combat that you know what i'm saying but it's like people want to stay more so in competition because they would rather compete with one another than to come together and make something that we can all benefit from you know what's your thoughts yeah. on that that's the problem we discussed that in the last episode it's like everybody wants to talk about how they don't fuck with the mainstream and they don't fuck with that side of the music business and everything else they don't care too much about all of that but then what they do on the independent level is it's like, you know, monkey see, monkey do. They see yeah. somebody do something, and then they just, instead of, like, you know, building with that person that they see doing something innovative, they just want to copy it. And then when they copy it, they just bring on their team instead of building with the next man that was actually doing something. And then before you know it, the innovative thing that was being done is now watered down yeah. and because they it wasn't a collective it wasn't people building with each other and that's the problem it's a whole lot of selfishness yeah. and it's I, I feel like it's always going to be there like you know i'm a pessimist by nature i would like to be more optimistic about the future like you know what i mean because i only know one business and that's the music business mm -hmm. and that's the entertainment business so i would love for some shit to open up oh, like, yeah, you know definitely. what i mean because this is where i'd fucking make my money yeah, i would like, love to know? see some things too but it's like like you said once and, it's, and it takes it back to a lot of things i was saying before like i say a lot of things on twitter that a lot of people don't really catch hold of until later on but i say things like you know new trends are like new words for most people because like as soon as they get a hold of that new word or that new slang or whatever or that new trend that got everybody talking it's like thousands of people jump on that one trend and then before you know it it gets old quick 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you see somebody come out with something innovative, then you see other people come along trying to copy that, and then next thing you know, it gets dated real fast. It's like, people would much rather bandwagon or ride off of somebody else's success, like what we see in the music business, rather than create something and be creative, get back to the originality. Like, same thing with the music business. It, call, it all goes hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't want to be original they don't want to be creative they would rather just copy over what other people are doing you know what i'm saying i think that brings the value down on so a lot anybody of anybody who want to come in and discuss this can you like you know because i went and i checked out their page can you just imagine being that stupid like when you're thinking about content i know you make content i know you have a radio show that you do you work with artists mm -hmm. i worked with artists on on a certain level like you know helping them get to labels and get placement on tv and source music and all of that. Okay. So I also do a podcast. I create content. You know, I put a lot of effort into it. I think ahead when I'm doing stuff and everything. Like, you know, I try to make bullet points sometimes, like, you know, throughout the week, certain points that I want to touch on. I don't script anything. It's just like, you know, put down bullet points and things like that. Mm -hmm. But then when I go and I listen to some of these motherfuckers, especially the people that's hating, and then I look at them and I'm like, okay, well, obviously you're doing better than me if you're hating. So I'm going to go and check it out. And I looked at it and it's like, they just knowing the basic shit. Mm -hmm. And so when you're it just emulating what you see, something like CNN doing, talking about everything that they're saying about the virus, like, you know, or just doing the basic shit, putting your homies on the platform and all of that, like, you know, playing just their music and everything. That shows me a lot about you. That shows me how fucking stupid that you are. Mm -hmm. That shows me that you have no fucking intelligence whatsoever. And if you're getting advice from somebody, if you ran that by somebody in your team, if you ran a, hey, let's just say everything that CNN says about the virus on my podcast that no one's going to listen to. And hey, let's just play all of our friends as like, you know, um, our, our, our music that we play for our radio show. Let's just play just our friends and let's just like, you know, see the updates about COVID and put it on our fucking channel. If if you ran that idea by somebody, that person is just as stupid as you are for letting you for for okay in that, for signing off on that, for giving you the fucking salute. Yeah. Fucking sheep. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Go ahead and call in, cause y'all was hating last night. Call in. Call in. I really Listen to NDI Radio on Wednesday at eleven oh five. I got something for you, but in the meantime, call in. Yeah. I would love to hear somebody, you know, call in and address, and address their thoughts on how they feel about, you know, th this topic of discussion that we got going on right now. Also, you know, that invitation that you gave to anybody out there who potentially has something otherwise on their mind. Feel free to call in. The number is 646-397-3510. We live right now. It's your boy Emilio Wegbar. We also got Divine Thought on the line, man. Call in. 646-397-3510 or leave a comment we are definitely post a comment and we are you know address it as so but you know definitely feel free we would love to hear from you guys you know what i mean yeah i want to take some time to thank the listeners too for the support because oh, yeah, you know a lot of times when we get like you know uh hit with some hate or something like you know we focus on that i try not to i try to be smarter than my enemy so yeah i want to take this time to thank the people who actually support because i do get a lot of support in like you know people saying thank you for speaking out about certain things and opening their eyes up to certain things and you know they listen every week and they repost my shit i definitely appreciate it and i appreciate it every time me and you come together and we do yeah, some content because we always do good good numbers and everything like that so you know it is what it is man absolutely. i don't like to always get up to an 11 man but you know <laughs> <laughs> this, that shit that happened last night was still kind of fresh so yeah, Shit. there's no problem, man. Like, that's we try to, like, you know, what I mean, like, we try to, well, myself and you know, myself in particular, I try to, you know, going forward, I try to, you know, create these kind of platforms where people that may agree or disagree with something they may have heard in either your content, my content, or anything that I may have said that may have been inaccurate. I try to open up the dialogue between us and the people out there that listen to us or watch us so they can 
provide feedback so they can we can have these healthy discussions to reach an understanding whether we reach one or not that's up to the person whether or not they feel a way that what they said or how they feel should be addressed that's up to that person when we try to give these platforms to create dialogue so that way we can reach an understanding and also have these healthy discussions that you know hopefully you know bring about some kind of you know um you know decent conversation you know regarding whatever topic we're talking about at that particular moment you know what i mean yeah it's, a, it's healthy to create some dialogue right now man because shit the independent scene, we just shooting from the hip, yeah. right? We just we just trying to figure it out as we go. The yeah. mainstream with how they doing, how they're resetting the business, this was all planned. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? They already have a plan with what's going to happen. Now it's time for us to create a plan finally. If this time right now in 2020 doesn't wake people up like to the fact that we really need to be independent and be away from these corporations and do our own thing. Like, you know, in general, in life too, with all the shit that's happening, but also as an artist to just be independent from all of these entities that are controlling everything, man, yeah. then I don't know what will. Cause right now, man, this is the, this is the wake up call. If people don't get it now, then I don't see how they ever will. This is an opening. We can come together on an independent level. We can, we're not going to create a new music business, but what we can do is affect change. We can, you know, spark some shit up on the, and I hate to use the word underground, like, you know, but people use that term. So they'd know what I mean when I say that I don't like that term, but like, you know, we can spark some shit up on the independent level and then we can affect the change. Once they see that something works, they will change how they do business. Yeah. You know, you know they will to, they will change. I always try to leave that whole, you know, sense of what we can call um optimism out there, you know what I'm saying? Because change can happen, but it's gonna take more than a, just a few people talking about change, you know what I'm saying? Like things could definitely be different. Like I, I feel as though things could be different. I don't think like the music business itself is dead in the water as of yet. But it will die and it continue to die if we don't say anything about it or if we don't try to do something that goes differently from what you know what we see out here now. But then again, like I said, that's just me speaking because I'm always an optimistic person. But it's like at the end of the day, like I can't and when it comes to certain things, I can't be the only one with that same optimism. You know what I'm saying? Like other people gotta feel as though like this is something that, you know, if they feel seriously or strongly about it. They got to also feel like this can be done. You know what I'm saying? Like they got to take part and have, you know, these types of discussions. And when you have platforms like this that are open to people to be able to call in and address how they sound, I mean, how they feel about the situation, then do so. You know what I'm saying? But it's like at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to do much if people are just staying quiet and just hating in the background. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So can you just imagine if like, Everybody with an independent platform right now just sort of came together and put some money up and created a, a streaming service of their own. It might not be as functional or as big as a Spotify or whatever from the rip. Right. But can you just imagine if it was like a streaming service where it was like kind of like a for us, by us kind of thing, like, mm -hmm. you know, with the, with the, like, you know, and just have that kind of thing going on right now with a collective that would be big, a place that we can archive our shows and have everybody like, you know, cause it takes a lot to have a streaming service like that or a place where you can archive a million podcasts and shit like that or a million uh, different radio shows from people and shit like that. It would take a, it would be a big undertaking mm -hmm. to really change what the music business is doing. And it is possible. Yeah. It's possible, man. I see a lot of people spending all this money on promo companies and all of this dumb shit <laughs> that ain't going to help them in their music career. They're putting all of these stacks up on like, you know what I'm saying? Paying talent agencies and paying promo companies and buying likes and buying followers and doing all of that dumb shit. When you could be actually investing it in your career and building 
with an independent network at the same time. Absolutely. And that's something I say all the time. I've been saying this since the nonstop radio show came into existence since our very first episode back June 1st, 2016. And I've always tried to encourage artists to invest in themselves. That money that you will use for all the other stuff that you do within your career, invest it in yourself. And I've had conversations with artists who actually get it. You know what I'm saying? Like they understand like, fuck it. Like why waste money going here, there and everywhere else and not get any results? Why not invest that money into something that I can really get behind and have more success than what I would running over here to a talent agency that may get my song added to some somebody's rotation or added to somebody, you know, Spotify playlist. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, if some of them do get it, but, you know, you got a lot of people out there that just still just to them, like a record label deal is the way to go. And I mean, however you want to get it, that's your business. But, you know, when you see a lot of people that are speaking out now about things that goes on in the music business and things that happens with in their own careers, why not listen to them and be like, you know what? Maybe they're right. Like you, like you come over here and you've had, you know, the beat goes in for, you know, X amount of years talking about your experiences within the music business and people still don't get it. And rather than you just listening to you and just be like, you know what? Like if we keep hearing the same thing and then I'm seeing the same thing, a lot of what he says come to light. Why not just, you know, listen to that and just do something, you know what I mean? Just do it the right way. Like you said, a lot of people treat the music business like it's a game app on their phone. When really it's not. Yeah. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to just recording a song and uploading it to your SoundCloud and trying to get it on Spotify or Tidal and all that other stuff. There's a lot more to it. You know, you got to get your copyrights together. You got to get your, you know, your uh, your publishing together. You know, you got to get your music registered with, you know, BDS and all that stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, even lately, like, I've tried to tell people, like, yo, make sure when you send your music here to be featured on this show, make sure it's tracked, I mean, registered for track airplay and make sure it's copywritten and make sure you got your publishing and stuff like that. But, you know, you still get people like, what is that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it can't help you if you're not trying to help yourself at the end of the day. And that's yeah. what it all boils down to. I don't know. You see, that kind of thing. That's the thing that makes me mad. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just makes me mad, dog. <laughs> like, it makes me... It, 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 like, that's the shit that... I swear to God, man, when I would be doing the beat goes in, I would tell myself before I start recording, I would be like, you know, woosa, like, mm -hmm. calm down. Like, you know what I mean? Relax. You don't got to yell at people. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You just got to, like, be up, be at a five. Be at a five. Just communicate. And then as I would talk about the shit because I've dealt with it on like, you know, in a broadcasting level where people will come in and, you know, just is this music copy? What, what, what's that? Like, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and just the basic shit, is this registered for track airplay? What's that? So put that together with 20 years of experience with just dealing with artists and dealing with that over. I cannot count dog how many times that's happened. That's happened so many times. I, I don't even fucking know. That's happened so many times. I've had managers not know what that means. Mm -hmm. And just think about that. Like I've had people that are managing the artists not know what that means. And it gets my blood boiling mm -hmm. because when I was, and you, you know, people like, well, practice what you preach. Okay. Well, fuck, I was 16 years old and I knew what that was. Mm -hmm. So, when I was 16 years old, I was on stage performing. I was on stage performing when I was 16 years old, man. Mm. That's over 20 fucking years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was I, like, I was on stage performing songs at 16 years old. So when people say like, well, they're young, that's not an excuse. Because yeah. you have to, when you're making music, you have to think, what next? Obviously, you want to get it put out somewhere. Do you think it's magic? Do you think that after you make the song that it's just ready? Do you think that that's what people do? Or do you think that there might be some kind of legal shit that you got to do with the music going forward before you put it out somewhere? Don't you think that there might be some type of fucking paperwork involved that you got to go forward with? And I don't really feel like that's rocket science, man. Because yeah. that's some shit that I knew at, when I was a teenager. 
Like, you know, so when I see grown ass men saying like, you know, what's a copyright? How do you write? Like what's registering your music? And then you tell them and then they don't even fucking believe you. And then they continue to make music without doing all that shit. And then they keep coming back to you. And then it's like, and they still say no, or they say, yeah, but you can tell they lying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, you're only hurting yourself when you lie about it. Like, you're just hurting yourself, man, by not learning this shit. Why not go and get the basic shit done just to prove that you're trying to be official with what you're doing? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It is. And when people have all of these, like, you know, fake ass managers with them, I'm going to tell artists this right now. Stop having managers. What the fuck do you need a manager for in 2020? I tell, I tell artists all the time, and I'm like, yo, listen, like, you, your manager is a reflection of you. Like, at the end of the day, if you got yeah. a manager that don't do business properly or, or they don't have the right etiquette or approach when it comes to trying to get you opportunities, that's going to reflect on you. And I'm like, I tell people that all the time. I've had countless people since I've done the nonstop radio show reach out to me very unprofessional. You tell them that, you know, you need X, Y, and Z in order to get your submission, you know, placed in and taken you know, seriously for consideration and they still hit me back. Well, da, 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 and then want to give me a bunch of excuses, but I'm like, yo, at the end of the day, would you go to power 99 FM? Would you go to hot nine seven? Would you go to power 105.1? Would you go out to some of them shows and uh, stations on the West coast down yo, South? Sam, Sam, I, w I know where you're going with it, but the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> yo, it's like they actually do. Mm -hmm. And that's the crazy shit is you would think they wouldn't. I know what you mean. It's like, what, you're treating me like this on the independent level, but would you treat those bigger stations like that? Right. And for being on the other, yes, well, I, I, they do. Well, now like, I can and understand it, and realize why some of them are in the positions that they are in. <laughs> yeah, they do. That's the problem. I'm telling you, it's so many, it's so many motherfuckers that over the years, and I'm not just talking about this era, last era, like, you know, I've been, generational with this shit like you know watching people not know what the fuck they're doing coming into radio stations coming into like you know trying to come in and get shows but their manager will come to me wanting their artists like you know to have this this and that done and i'm like you know where's the where's the electronic press kit and they're like mm -hmm. what what's that <laughs> and i'm like are you a manager like you know so i'm talking to artists now stop having managers that was more necessary before. That was more necessary, like, pre-streaming service, pre-all of this shit that we have technology-wise now. That's That was, like, that was more necessary before, like, cell phones. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, so when you have a manager, they book you shows, and, like, you know, they get... I can see having an agent, because the agent eats what they hunt. Yeah. Like, you know, they'll go and they'll open up some opportunities for you that you might not have got before. A manager doesn't do that. A manager is your voice to talk to all of these other people. Plus, they take most of them at least 15 percent of what you like, you know, of everything that they do, which if your manager doesn't know what the fuck they're doing when it comes to the business and they're still taking 15 percent and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of managers that have ruined a lot of people's, like, from the rip, from the very beginning, from the first impression. A lot of y'all motherfuckers don't realize you only get one impression. And when your manager comes in acting stupid, that's your one impression. You're gone. Your name is attached to that manager. So if you have a manager that's, let's say, a family member or a friend or somebody who's unqualified and doesn't know the business or knows about as much about the business as you do and then get rid of them, you're being stupid. Yeah. You can do all of that yourself. You can book your own shows once everything opens back up, if it ever does. You can go book your own shows. Get to being able to talk to promoters yourself. Do all of that. Yeah. Call. Like, you know, use your phone. You're on it all day. Use it for what the manager would do and book your own shit well, and shit. do all of that. Just to throw a quick little plug in there for people out there that's watching and listening right now, whether you listen to the recap or not. There was once a time when you was actually, you know, like selling a contact list for people. You know what I'm saying? Like, is those yeah. services still available? Yeah, I still got it. 
I still got, I got contacts mm-hmm. for, I mean, everybody, I got contacts for every label that there is, every imprint that there is. I got, I mean, from, and a lot of people don't even realize this. When you say source music, a lot of artists don't even know what that means. Mm-hmm. And when I say getting your music placed in TV and film, they have no idea how to do it. They have no idea that that was even possible. No, right. They, yeah. So, nice. yeah, I mean, I have all the, like, I have contacts for source music placement and TV and film. Yeah. And, you know, I still do services for artists um, to, to get them into TV and film, mainly singers, because hip hop has such a bad rap right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that, it's really hard. I mean, hip hop, the business is crippled. Yeah. The business part of hip hop is crippled. So like, it's, it's hard to get that placed anywhere in TV and film right yeah. now. So I mainly deal with singers, but again, I come from hip hop. So I would love for that to change, yeah. but we got to change the landscape of, of hip hop for that to be the case. Like, that you know what true. I mean? But you know, getting back you to- know, you can still do it as a producer too. If you make beats, you can get those beats and, video games you can get those beats yeah. and tv and, and and film and different things man yeah, like, like you know shout out, like like two people i want to plug in and shout out for what they do like one i want to shout out you know a, a, an artist that i know by the name of tamara bubble you know what i'm saying like she's running like <laughs> she hit the ground running like she got her music and tv shows and you know like hulu movies and series and stuff like that like i've seen her i've heard her music pop up on you know various um episodes of like popular reality series such as um um what is it ah damn i'm trying to think it's the one they had just recently i don't think it's uh airing anymore but it was one it was based in brooklyn where, you know, they had, you know, some shit going on or whatever the case may be. But her music appeared on that one. It appeared, I think, one time on um, Love and Hip Hop. And it appeared on, um, you know, uh, Black Ink Crew and some other things. You know what I'm saying? She, yeah. she, she's running with the source material. Then also want to say, you know, shout out to my man Will Gass because he just got his music added to some, you know, independent video games out there. So, you know, a lot of people think that, there's only one lane within the music business, but I try to tell people all the time, there's various other lanes. You tell people all the time, there's various other lanes as far as like source music and, you know, you know, sync catalogs and things like that. I've heard episodes of The Beat Goes In where you discuss this very much, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. people would much rather not take advantage of those opportunities out there because they think that everything is supposed to be handed to them. You know? They think everything's supposed to be handed to them and they want instant results. Yes. They want instant gratification so when i do a beat goes in and i did a beat goes in where i even told you exactly how to get it put into the same catalog and where to go i'm mm-hmm. not going to do that right now i'm not that nice mm-hmm. i was nice then i'm not being nice now contact me for all matters podcast at gmail.com we can do business this is a business like you know what i mean but i did a whole episode i'm sure you remember the joint yeah. i think i called it the music business 101 yeah. where i just went and i hit them with that every was like one of your thing very to first do. ones. Yeah. I hit them with everything ones. on what to do. And very few people thanked me for it. Very few people did that. And those same people that didn't listen went right on social media and tried to get likes with the SoundCloud links and the Spotify mm. links and everything because they think likes pay the bills. Yeah. They think likes are the music business. Their currency is retweets and likes and instagram posts and shit that's that's their currency Mm -hmm. that's what the music business turns into man it's crazy yeah because you know it didn't used to be like that man this shit used to be a profession and taken very seriously and when i see people not taking it seriously when people don't know the very fucking basics it angers me like it it really does make me fucking mad you know when i'm dealing with an artist that doesn't care you know, one thing that I saw recently that kind of like I kind of, you know, applaud now, even though before I kind of frowned upon it is the fact that you have these artists out here that want to, you know, not take it seriously. So they run into what I like to call roadblocks when they come to somebody and they expecting certain services, but that service comes with a price and then you don't hear from that artist again. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't feel so fond of it at first but now i kind of like understand it and i like it more so now because you see who is realistically you know 
serious about what they're doing and about how far they want to take their careers. Whereas you see the ones that are actually out here doing things for a hobby. See, for those people, like we were talking about earlier, you want to like invest into yourself, but on people that would like to invest in themselves and they purchase your services and things like that, that shows that they're serious. You know, before I didn't yeah. think so, but now it's like, you know, I understand that. But then you also got to be careful because you do got those ones out there that don't do the research of certain opportunities that they come in contact with and then they get taken for everything we got. And I know we know a, a, a few people <laughs> out there that had yeah. that unfortunate circumstance happen to them. But at the same time, like, you know, you know, there's ways that you're going to find out now, especially in this current era, that you're going to see who's serious and who's not serious about this thing, man. Yeah, I would say that a lot of the people who get taken by scam artists, and see, that's what gave purchasing services from people a bad name. Yeah, Don't ever get it fucked up. This is the music business. Yeah. Business. It's a profession. You're supposed to be able to, bu you're supposed to buy shit. You're supposed to purchase services from people who can do shit for you. That's mm -hmm. what this is. It's a fucking business. Absolutely. So, when people frown upon someone who is selling their services, I can get it because there's so many scam artists or whatever, but also that's the person's fault for not educating themselves about the business itself. Because, you know, I can only go back to me at 16 years old saying, hey, I just got a song done. How do I make this next move? Like, so how would I get this played on the radio? Back then, we didn't have anything except FM radio. So it was like, how would I get this played on the radio? And then I would get my question answered. Okay, so you need to get copyrights. You need to get it registered. There's a certain amount of information that you get organically when you just take it seriously. So when you take this business seriously and you start to move forward, the information comes to you and then as long as you're a sponge and you can soak up the information and as long as this is really your passion like you say it is then you you'll learn and you'll go forward and you'll be able to spot the scam artist from the person who's really selling real services mm -hmm. that you know it's it, it would be so easy to spot as long as you're taking your career seriously if you never plan on just so anybody listening, if you never plan, I don't care that COVID shut everything down and all of that. If you never plan on getting on a physical stage, stop making music mm -hmm. right now. Stop it. Stop. What are you doing? For what reason are you making music then? Stop making music. I'll say this. You don't got to stop making music, but stop calling yourself an artist in, in different things that the people who take this shit seriously call themselves. Cause you're putting your music and you're doing everything that people who take this business seriously do. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if that happened with any other, pro any other profession dog? Can you imagine if you were trying to find a plumber? Like if your sink was backed up or your toilet was backed up, right? You're trying to find a plumber and there's only one real plumber in the room and a bunch of fake ass plumbers just ran in with shirts that say plumber on it. Yeah. Like, and you really trying to get your problem fixed, but you got to be like, hey, which one's the real plumber? Like, like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what's happening with the music business. If you never planned on getting on stage, stop. Because, or just do it at home. Yeah. What are you putting it on Spotify and everywhere? Why are you doing it? For attention? <laughs> like, is that it? Is it? Like, you just want attention. That's what it is. You You just want likes. You want people to say that you're as good as the people that you revere that's what it is so this new generation whatever i don't know i don't follow music anymore to be honest so whatever the fucking new artists are and all of that that's who you want to be like right but you don't want to do what they did and i'm not talking about signing the 360 deal that they definitely signed i'm talking about getting on stage and doing all the hard work because even one of these little kids that's signing a 360 deal and getting all the money taken by you like you know the industry devils they still have to put in work they still have to go on stage they still have to show up for appearances they still have to do all type of shit it's work so if you don't what these people want is they want the instant gratification of of being like you know called like of their friends saying that they're just as good as the artists they revere by getting a like and a comment yo this mm -hmm. track is hot cool aside from that what are you doing man
Because if you never planned on getting on stage, if you never planned on taking it further and, and you know, and then people are like, I don't want to mess with a major label. I don't want to do this. I don't want, oh, so you don't want to make money? You don't want to, you don't want to, what? To get your song in front of a lot more people? Mm-hmm. It's not the major label that's the problem. It, the major labels are malfunctioning. Yes, the, the, the major labels are devilish and everybody in there, but there's one music business. We talked about it. We're not going to change it. You can go in with value to a label for distribution, for other things. You can go in with value. As long as you are proving your value, you can go in with your EPK, your electronic press kit, showing that you've got, you know, X amount of performances and, you know, live video of yourself. And we didn't even have all of that back Mm -hmm. then when I was doing like, you know, press kits. Mm -hmm. So these artists now have a big advantage because you can show all of your, um, your live shows and, 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 and broadcast data systems, BDS, Nielsen tracks your live shows, yeah. media base tracks your live shows, media base tracks all the spins that you get. And so are you trying to focus on getting your music played on, on, on different platforms that can actually get your music tracked? Are you researching that? What are you doing? Or are you just trying to get your shit on a Spotify playlist mm-hmm. like, and, and get fractions of pennies and then be satisfied with it? You showed me a tweet with somebody, man. I don't care. I'll call him out. You get this. It was like six fifty or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was all. It was proud of six fifty, man. Like, it was like three years oh, worth of work. Man, yo, <laughs> <laughs> yo. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I wanted to say like, good. Now you can go get yourself a cup, a cup of coffee in a Danish with that six fifty you just made from your streaming, like. I'm like, how many yeah. streams that, that you had to get to get to that cup of coffee in that Danish? Like, think about it. I'm like, yo, like, it's cool to sound, to feel like you're getting a check for your music, but 650, come on, bro. Like, that, that yo, <laughs> you're not even wiping man, your ass the, for 650 for that matter. You know what I'm saying? So so put like, that yo. shit into perspective, man. I used to load up the trunk with physical copies wherever I went. Uh-huh. And, you know, my physicals could go from anywhere depending on the area I was in. Cause sometimes I would be doing live shows in the area and I might be able to get 10 for, for my disc. If I was selling it outside, like around my show with people that just like, you know, heard me perform or word of mouth, I might be able to get 10 or 12 mm-hmm. dependent, but that was up to me. Right. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You could sell it for eight. You could sell it for 10. Like you could sell it for 12, depending on how you was hustling. And when we used to have to go through disc makers, to get your um your disc pressed up and barcoded and all, we used to have to go to the bodegas and get them put in. So when they when they would buy the disc, they would scan it and that would go through sound scan. Right. And it was all of this, you you know shit that had to do with it, right? But that was building yourself up as an artist. And immediately, one off, what that person that was bragging about six fifty with their streams, how ever many months it took them and they were like finally i got 650 and you know what i'm proud of it i'm so proud of myself i got that in five minutes i got that in five minutes with a physical copy y'all are proud of fractions of pennies (laughs) well we got one comment you know from the lazarus who just commented and he wanted to know who was the artist on air with me and he goes by the name of Divine Thought, you know what I'm saying, for everybody out there who's tuning in now for the very first time, or you may have been watching and you may not have caught the name at the beginning, but this is Divine Thought. He is the host of For All Matters, the podcast. For anybody out there watching, if you would like to call in and be heard and speak to the Divine Thought regarding, you know, what we're talking about and discussing here tonight, the number is at the bottom, scrolling across the screen, 646 646- Three nine seven three five one zero. Call in, or you can leave a comment, and I'll post a comment, and we'll go from there. But as you were seeing, Devon, no, nah, and just to clear that up, you know, I used to be an artist. I'm not an artist now. Like you know, I'm a businessman. I just work inside the business, and I do content, and I do whatever it is that makes money. Because if you're just an artist these days, like you have to be more than that yeah. to be able to survive in this climate. Another you comment from says he appreciates your encouragement. 
And he also says that he's been stuck as a stream artist. So perhaps maybe you can give him a little bit of, you know, like insight and advice from, you know, your experience within the music business. Maybe you could, you know, help him with a little bit of something that could help him out. He said he was stuck as what? He's been stuck as a stream artist. Like, Lazarus, if you're still watching, you know, elaborate on that. Let us know what you mean by stuck as a stream artist. Well, if, well, like, if he means that he's just stuck on the streaming services and getting his music out that way and trying to figure out other ways of getting your music out, I would say this. Do more than music, and then your music will sell itself. Your music will be just, your music will be secondary, Right. Don't let your music define you as an artist. When you think of any artist that's out right now, what do you think of first? It's not the music. Mm -hmm. So when become a brand. So we have all of these, like, you know, social networks and everything that's going on right now. And get in people's face. Make people know who you are. If that means streaming, doing live streams, doing whatever you got to do, do a podcast, do whatever kind of live content that you can do have people get to know you because there's followers, right? So if you have social media, there's followers. Followers don't mean shit. Followers don't mean that they're your, that they're a supporter or a fan. Yeah. That just means that they, they follow, follow you, you, you exactly. follow them back. Right. So what you want to do is you want to turn followers into supporters and turn supporters into fans. Right. So the supporters will end up, when you turn your followers into supporters, that means that you engage with them. That right. means that you have something of value that you can present to them. And these days, people have short attention spans. So right. a lot of times, they're not looking at music. Well, they're, well hold they're, on real quick. Um, we have one person that wants to call in. Once again, the number is 646-397-3510. The lines are now open for anybody who would like to join in on this discussion. We are talking, well, following up our release, recent live stream special event following um, the music business uh, dilemma and solution. So if you're out there, you would like to call in. The lines are open now. It's at 646 646- 397-3510. It's the Nonstop Radio Show collabing with For All Matters here tonight. All right, now my fool, what you were saying? No, nah, I was just um uh, I was just saying how like when you become a brand and then that's gonna make your music that much more better. That's gonna make people come to you for anything that you do. Mm-hmm. So when you have your music up for streaming or whatever the case might be, you just, Artists nowadays just got to accept certain facts. We can't have physical copies now, right? right? People, you try to hand them a CD, they're going to say, where can I even play this? So we got to accept certain facts. Streaming is what it is. But you can get your own website. You don't have to put your music up just on streaming and get fractions of pennies. You can get your own website where, right. like, you know, All you right. can have fees or whatever. One second, we got to go to an, um, our first caller of the evening, calling in from California. You're now on the line with Emilio Wackbar and Devon Thor, so say your name and tell us about yourself. Call from? Okay. I sent the caller voicemail. Goodbye. Oh, well, I guess they hung up. But if you was out there listening, you would like to call back once again, please feel free to do so. The number is 646 646- Three nine seven three five one zero. So yeah, that would be my advice, man. Is just be a brand. Yeah. You know, a lot of artists don't understand that. You just got to be a brand and make people believe you. Yeah, that's true. Separate yourself. Absolutely, man. You know, like I, I, we we mentioned that before, like where a lot of people. You know, um, they kind of get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? When they talk about brands and stuff, like, I don't think a lot of people out there really kind of understand exactly what a brand is, to, to, uh, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, when you get a brand, basically, you are more than just what you do with music. Nowadays, people have very short attention spans. So what you got to do is you got to be in their face all the time. People have to know more about you than your bars or what you're saying in your songs. People have to get to feel, even if, even if you only showing them what you want to show them, 
of your life and what you doing and shit like that. You don't gotta like, you know, live stream every fucking second of your life or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're connecting with your audience in some kind of way and being accessible in some type of way, having merchandise for sale. And when I say merchandise, man, please understand. I don't mean like a basic ass decal on a shirt iron on decal <laughs> on the shirt and all of that. Yeah. And then in the first thunderstorm, it, you know what I mean? It's going to wash off in a thunderstorm, yeah. man. No, like, you know what I'm saying? Put the, everything you do is going to reflect you as an artist. So if it takes you a little bit longer to find a merchandiser, that's going to put you together some quality merchandise and then take that little bit of extra time. If it's going to take you a little bit of extra money and then stop paying people for dumb shit when it comes to like, you know, a lot of people spend money in dumb places for like mm -hmm. follows and likes and promo companies and this and that. Stop spending your money in dumb shit yeah, and spend it, <laughs> spend it into yourself, spend it to, for your own merchandise, get yourself a better merchandiser, like, you know, create relationships with people like that, who you can buy at a lower cost and sell for a higher cost. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That's how you can become a brand, man. People get to know you. And then if you really want to do it, especially if you rap now, I would say, like, you know, you really got to have a, a backup plan because everybody raps. Yeah. Everybody raps. That's Tell me a person that don't rap. Earlier. Shit, like, damn near everybody got bars. Like, I think yeah. I've even seen now the dude from Power that played Ghost. I think he's pursuing a, a, a rap career now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. everybody's out there. I even seen the dude that played Tommy in Power. He appeared on some um on a, on a video with, uh, what's his name? DJ K Slut. So, it's like everybody in their mother out there is trying their hand and being a rapper. But it's like a lot of people just don't understand exactly what it takes to make it within the music business, I see. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, especially rappers, they gotta, they gotta do a lot more than rap. Yeah. Like you know, when when you're gonna get opportunities now, when it, if it's a distribution deal or whatever it is that you're looking for, some kind of bigger opportunity. If you want to be in a show like Power, mm -hmm. like you know what I mean, because they do hire for people that just come in and be extras, and then you can work your way into being in that type of shit in that yeah. realm. Like, like you know what I'm saying? If you want to start to get higher up into things if you just come to them with music you're gonna aggravate them mm -hmm. you're gonna make them mad especially if you say that you're a rapper you're gonna make these people mad like you know what i mean i know that from experience because people used to when i'd be in artist meetings like you know they'd come in my face and dangle earphones in my face and shit, dangle their earbuds in my face and shit like that and i wanted to smack them right in their fucking mouth <laughs> and that's a quick that's a quick way to not get somebody's attention. So what you could do is approach them and say all the other things that you do. Hey, I got a website here. I got this, I got that. Like, you know, get your electronic press kit together. That way you don't even really got to do a lot of talking. I just got to look at the press kit and I can see how you are a brand and how you're, how you, like, you know, how you're moving aside from being an artist. And mm -hmm. then that's going to, get the attention of anybody else that can help you with the opportunity, then they'll hit play on the music. If they see a solid brand getting put together that all they got to do is put some money behind because it already has some uh, momentum. And then that's going to be a lot more appealing in a lot of ways than somebody who just fucking raps, you know what I'm saying? And just got bars and shit. It's people who tell me they got bars, I go, okay, so do I. And I'm much older than you, and I bet you I could wrap a circle around you. Yeah. Next, next, next. Like, you know what I mean? It, 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 it don't mean nothing now. It doesn't mean nothing. And it's a shame that it doesn't mean nothing. Yeah, but there's like too many words. fucking people rapping. Yeah, like, I, my brother, me and him, we have conversations about this all the time. We always have discussions about artistry and the music business and how the fact that you got so many people out here nowadays that think they're rappers and all that stuff and you know sometimes i kind of you know scoff at the idea where so many people when they come up with these memes talking about yo if you really care about your friend tell him you can't rap you know what i'm saying sometimes like i feel like you know what that may be true maybe it is time to tell some people to you know like this ain't for you like, if you can't do the simple things such as get on the stage, when I realized that I couldn't get on the stage, I realized that, you know, this is not 
really for me. If I can't get on there and and rap, maybe that's not for me. Maybe I need to find another route. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. there are other people out there that, you know, they don't want to go through the ins and outs, the hard work, the labor that's required to make this thing happen. So maybe this ain't for them. You know, there's nothing wrong yeah. with wanting to rap, but like, you know, do it for a hobby. Don't try to, you know, flood the market with bullshit. And then, you know, that bullshit gets mixed up with the people that are genuinely out here trying to do something. And then next thing you know, it like the field is so oversaturated, you have to sit there and literally sift through what's there to try to find anything of any kind of quality. And then when, yeah. when it comes to that, it's years down the line now. And this person who's been hot all along, and it was really taking it serious that got overlooked because you got X, Y, and Z. These people over here trying to rap, and they flooded the you know the the, the lane with so much bullshit that people just tuned the deaf ear to them. You know what I'm saying? So like, I that's why the hip hop market is dead. Yeah. That's why the music business, as far as the hip hop market, is shut down and dead. And people gonna try to tell me how are you gonna say that hip-hop is dead when we have all of these number one artists that are hip-hop well mm -hmm. i'll tell you why because those artists were hand-picked from some industry devil just hand-picked them pulled them up took all of their publishing took all of the copyrights took all of their touring took all of their merchandising took everything from them put them to a 360 deal and dressed them up in some kind of gimmick and then told them to go out there and do it yeah. and then they're a puppet so the more that artists allow that to happen, which when it's done in that fashion, of course the artist is going to allow it to happen because they're probably not really an artist. Mm -hmm. And those same people are getting handed songs that they don't write yes. too. Like, you know, and a lot of this is ghostwriting. Like you won't see the credit for the writer. It's ghostwriting. So a lot of times you won't even know that your favorite artist ain't writing their own shit. A lot of times, it's just like Mr. Potato Head getting put together as an artist. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a like a little toy being put together and and made and and shaped and molded and then put out there. And so that killed the market. Yeah. It, it, like you know, it killed the ability for this quote real hip hop to ever make a comeback because like it just the mainstream is where the that's where the top forty is. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, a lot of people, and we talked about this in the last stream, you know, they equate the mainstream for being a sellout and all of this, which in general, that was just, kind of, that was a good psyop that the industry devils did to fuck with all of us, to make us believe that success was selling out. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? They really did a number on everyone I'd say from like my age down to your age group and, and under like, you know what I mean? The people who really care about bars, you ever notice the people who care about bars think that they equate success as being a sellout? Yeah, yeah, I see that. In that, <laughs> in well, that, in, in, in that weird they how they did it. that to us? Yeah, or well, like how back in the day they used to call it crossing over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they didn't want to mean under. Like you had the choice of either going underground or mainstream. So like those who didn't want to cross over or whatever, their careers didn't make it that far. So like the ones that did quote unquote crossover they sold out or whatever because they didn't want to stay underground yeah i agree but then those same people that scream real hip-hop talk about all of this self-righteous shit about how like you know they support and they wish that the person that they supported made more money because this is real hip-hop so they don't know what they believe. They want that person on the underground to make, quote, more money. But then what would happen? If they did that, then you would consider them a sellout. Mm -hmm. You consider success as being a sellout. And I'm going to tell you this from experience, because a lot of these, quote, underground uh, artists and everything, a lot of the popular ones that you can name off the top of your head that's been around for 10 years or more on the underground scene, I opened for them. Mm -hmm. I, I was mid, or if I wasn't opening for them, I was in mid ticket with them. I was like in the middle of the show, mm -hmm. like, you know, but I was definitely backstage with them. And I know a lot of them. And these underground artists make way more money than the 360 deal kids oh, that yeah. signed these major record deals. So when you're calling someone a sellout for signing a major record deal, making no money, these kids are making no money for like two, three, four years. 
like these little Uzis, little, little this, little that. Them motherfuckers ain't seeing no money, especially right now with COVID, because all they got is mechanical royalties, which is performance money, and they're not performing. So they're not making no money. The, the label makes the money. And, and right now the label is advancing them money while they're not being able to perform, which is putting them further in debt because that money is it's coming with interest. Yeah. A lot of these kids that are being told that they're being called sellouts for signing major record deals are making absolutely no money whatsoever. Just because they're um, just, just because you feel like they're, like, you know, flaunting money and doing all of this shit. And, and like, you know, it, it, that's nothing. All Yo, of that shit is paid for by the label. Let me tell you something, man. Like quiet is this cap. I don't know if anybody is really like, if, if anybody remembers this era, but do you remember the time when you could actually go to a corner store and, and you could buy like stacks of money and that shit would look realistic. And motherfuckers yeah. would be flashing that in their videos, like it was real yep. money and shit like that. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I remember them days. I remember yeah. you go to the bodega and grab. Yep. Yeah, like five dollars to get you a stack. Is, like fuck out. Yeah, of <laughs> and that's what it is, man. It's but see, the label might even give these artists real money to throw around in the video, but they they don't get to pick it back up. Yeah. Like their cars, their cars are owned by the label. Yeah. People don't realize that. Like the cars that they drive are owned by the label. They don't even own their cars. They don't own their mansion. Their mansion is based on if that label is kind enough to keep them on board. That's why you see a lot of these artists that are on these 360 deals, they'll be quick one hit wonders or two, three hit wonders. And then they're out of their mansion. And then before you know it, they're going to be on love and hip hop and Mona Scott is going to have to pay them. And oh, that man. money is going to go towards the debt that they owe towards some industry devil that they signed a 360 deal with. Now, speaking of Mona Scott, have you seen recently how they've been dragging Mona Scott? I don't doubt it. I ain't yeah. see it though. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's going around, you know, a lot of people are starting to drag, excuse me, Mona Scott or whatever, talking about how she ruined so many people's lives. I'm like, yo, listen, <laughs> there's blame on both sides of the equation, if you want to be fair, because um, at the end of the day, yeah, Mona Scott may have exploited people's, you know, personal lives for entertainment purposes, but you also got to blame on people that was willing to sacrifice their integrity for to maintain an income. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you made that really what it is, is those people sign their way into having to do that. They signed yeah. bad contracts like, you know, Peter Guns, all of that. Like, they they signed bad contracts. Mm -hmm. They So, everybody wants to blame the industry devil and say how bad the music industry is, especially right now with Kanye and his antics right now saying all of this shit, exposing the music industry and all that. No, he's mm -hmm. not. Let me expose the industry for you right, right now. Everyone that's considered a legend signed a bad contract. Mm -hmm. They went in and they were stupid. And they did not know a goddamn thing about the music business. And they sat down and they signed bad contracts. And to this day, everyone that you consider a legend doesn't own their own music. Mm -hmm. They own the music that they're making now that you don't buy or listen to or stream. I know y'all only like the shit that they don't own, which is when they were on the major label. Mm -hmm. So all of these legends and quote pioneers and everybody who gets all of this respect, they signed bad contracts. They did not have a gun to their head, mm -hmm. by the way. Nobody forced them to do that. Yes, they were in, some of them were in bad life situations. They saw it as a way out. I get it, man. Like, you know what I mean? I'm from the hood too. I get it. I understand. That's why I sat down with a record label. I get it. I understand that mentality. But here's the thing. Nobody had a gun to their head. They signed mm -hmm. bad record deals. So there's two sides of the equation. You cannot keep blaming the industry devil for everything the devil is going to be a devil so when you're sitting in front of that devil and and you're believing what's on that paperwork or you're believing your manager that might not know what the fuck he's doing or might might be in bed with the label because that's what happened with me my manager was in bed with the label because i thought getting a good manager was a good look no getting a good prominent manager was a bad idea because yeah. they was already in bed with the label so, like, you know, 
you got a lot of blame on both sides. The yeah. artists put yeah. themselves in this bullshit. So everybody who feels like they're going to come out now and tell their truth because Kanye's doing his antics about the fucking music business and all of that, y'all can save all that shit. Because I know there's going to be a lot of old, washed-up fucking artists probably not just rappers, there's going to be a lot of rappers, there's going to be a lot of artists that feel empowered now, like it's going to be some Me Too movement with fucking artists coming out about the industry devils. Here's both sides. They signed bad contracts, and they put themselves in that situation. Yeah. They put themselves there. I mean, like, it, you know? it, all comes, it all boils down to accountability, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, you got to take some accountability for your choices and your decisions that you make as far as anything goes in life, not just the music business, but in life in general, you got to take accountability for the bad decisions you made. Now, some people get tricked into them, you know, them bad decisions. You know, I do admit yeah. that, but at the same time, like you can't just sit there and just blame one person for the reason why this person didn't, you know, become what they thought they was going to be. You gotta, you know, you gotta put that blame around where it belongs. And there's blame to go around for anybody that makes a bad decision. Then later on, they got to pay for it through some kind of like, you know, like you see now where you got a lot of these, you know, has been rappers, I should say, going on these, you know, uh, reality TV shows and being made a fool of because of the fact that, you know, they made those bad decisions. So it's blame yeah. on both sides, man. And they know that they're going to have to go humiliate themselves because they know the industry. Yeah. They sign on with Mona Scott. And when they, it's not like they go, Mona Scott, who are you? Yeah. What show am I on? I've never saw it. Yeah. They know exactly who Mona Scott is. Everybody, I remember talking about Mona Scott on the beat goes in and ain't nobody know who she was. Yeah. I remember that when people were getting, getting at me like, yo, who the fuck is that? Like, you know what I mean? And I had to explain who she was. Like, you know, and she, you know what? Shout out to Mona Scott because in a business that is like just, and I'm not going on some women power thing here, but the <laughs> business is not good to women. Yeah. The music business is not good to women, bro. Oh, yeah. It's really not. You don't see a lot of people at like, that are women in these in these prominent spots man yeah. you really don't there's not a lot and it's like less than five that i can think of off the top of my head like you know that actually are movers and shakers to that level mm -hmm. and she's dealt with a lot you know to be in that position she's dealt with a lot of bullshit you, you, you know power struggles different shit like that so yeah she's got she's got a business going on and, and exploiting people the same way that the motherfucking industry devils and, and the labels do. So yeah. what? Like, you know, they're signing on to it. These old washed up rappers, they get on there and you know what? That check that Mona Scott cuts to them most likely is paying off old industry debt yeah. that they got for, <laughs> for real. Because by the time an artist gets to their sophomore album, they owe money. Yeah. Like, you know, they, they owe money. That's the way that these deals work now. And they've been like that for a long time. So by the time you get to your sophomore album, you're already in debt. Like, you know, even in these current contracts right now, fam, you still have on, like, I just looked at an Atlantic Records contract not all that long ago, and uh -huh. it still said damages. So mm -hmm. the artist has to pay for damages. What damages, dog? Like, streaming? How can it, because what damages used to be was like shipping with the CDs and all of that is yeah. going to tower records with the CDs and the damages that would happen maybe. And they would make the artists cover all, all of that expense. Like, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. what the fuck is damaging? How the fuck is streams going to get damaged? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. They put all of this little slick shit in these contracts. It's the artist's fault for signing them. I think them. I just had this conversation with somebody a few days ago and I was discussing it. You know what I'm saying? Like we were talking about, um, contract situations and things of that nature. And I'm like, yo, like at the end of the day, you got people in here that's signing these three sixties, not realizing that all that money that they are, you know, getting from that deal is going to get recouped. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's like, they, they basically are, you know, building you up, but then once they build you up, they are taking back everything that they use to build you up and they moving on to the next thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Very, very it's not a good look. Yeah, it's not. I mean, I've 
discussed it plenty of times before here on the nonstop radio show about you know the the dangers of getting trapped in a 360 deal you know what i'm saying and still people think it's the best thing moving since sliced bread like i really i've always been one of those ones that i was like you know what if i can do it without a record deal then i will you know what i'm saying make it so yeah. to the point where the labels are coming to you not so you're seeking out the labels make it so that they come to you and make sure you have enough information about the business so that way you don't get yourself cheated or locked into a situation that you can't get out of you know what i'm saying yeah and i see a lot of that with these because i work with singers a lot more than i do rappers for my own sanity but when i see like what what i see with singers is singers think they know about 360 deals but what singers think a lot and this goes for rappers too they think that they're going to be the exception Mm -hmm. they think they're going to walk in and they're not going to get the 360 deal. They think that because they're so good that they're going to go in and be the exception. I'm going to tell you, there's no exceptions. There's no exceptions. You're not going to be the exception. Yeah. This is a cold fucking business. And however good you think you rap or however good you think you sing, trust me, there's somebody who sings and raps exactly. circles around you. Exactly. Absolutely. You're not the exception. You will not be the exception. You're not special. And I'm not trying to say that to kill nobody's confidence in any type way, but you're not special, not in this business. A lot of people like to apply Tumblr quotes to the music business, and that shit makes me fucking mad, dog. I, <laughs> I, like, I, I, like, I, I, I hate to be, like, pissing on people's pancakes and shit like that. Like, I hate to be that dude, but at the end of the day, man, like, you, like you can't, like, the, like, a lot of people get mad at me, and they're like, well, if if you do art, then you're an artist. Like, you know, if you're a hobbyist and you just do art, that means you're an artist like everyone else. And yeah, you know, say that shit for Tumblr, man. That your inspirational quote, have an ass. That has nothing to do <laughs> with the music business. Not at all. Yeah. And no, just because you make music does not make you a fucking artist. That's not what that means. Like, you know, I could take 90% of these people that have their tracks up on Spotify right now and put them on stage with a microphone and they won't be able to even sing their own goddamn song because it's wrote down in their phone mm -hmm. and they never had it memorized and they're scared of the stage on top of that. So like, you know, don't say that you're an artist because real artists would be able to get up on that stage at any time and off the top be able to recite their song mm -hmm. and be ready. Like, you know what I mean? Be ready for any anything be like because as when you're an artist you don't know what's going to happen any day you could just have an opportunity you got to be ready for an opportunity if you're not ready for an opportunity if you got to learn your own song after you recorded it because you read it from your phone i'm sorry man you're not an artist you're not an artist and i get into that argument a lot with people where they're like you know what i mean no, i'm gonna just read my i, I read that shit when i record oh because you're stupid you think that you think you're going to record that song and have it be as good when you're reading it off your phone or notebook or whatever the case may be. You think you're going to make it. Yeah, I could read off that shit and make it good, too. It doesn't matter. It would be a lot better if you had it committed to memory and be ready for any fucking opportunity whatsoever right. that presents itself because I've actually saw it with my own eyes. I've actually taken advantage of it and made money coming off of a studio trip back when people actually tried and they went to studios. Like I know people just do it on their iPhones now, but like when people actually tried and they went to studios and shit like that. So like when I was in the studio, like I actually had an opportunity come to me because somebody heard my session. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and it was like, yo, do you want to come here and perform that later on? Da da da. And I was like, hold up. I got to go online. I got to copyright this shit first. Yeah. Da 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 da. Right. Mm -hmm. So, opportunities will come your way if you're ready for them. Yeah. And when I went to the studio, I always made sure that I memorized all of the music yeah. and, and I was stage ready. That way, if somebody said, here's a microphone, I didn't look like an asshole. Yeah. And you can't do that with 90% of these motherfuckers that got songs out right now. That's another way to be a brand. Take yourself fucking seriously. Because if you don't take yourself seriously, guess what? I believe you. And so does everyone else subconsciously. Because they look at you and they see a motherfucker that don't even know their own song. So how can they take you seriously if you don't even know your own song? That's so yeah, song. take yourself seriously. That's, That's part song. of being a brand. 
that's part of being a brand because a lot of people, it's all subconscious. People feel energy when they when they see when when they see you doing content, when they see you on Instagram, whatever, they feel that energy. They know if you're fake somewhere subconsciously. They know if they want to continue to follow you or not. Mm-hmm. You got to be ready for every opportunity and you got to at least know your own music. You know what I mean? You got a comment from that's Elijah. Enough- she said, that's tough love. Got to break down the egos, man. I definitely agree with that one. Word up. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you ran on for two hours, which was not bad for one that was just scheduled like last minute. You know what I'm saying? We had, yeah, it was last second. Yeah, we had no prior plans to doing this here tonight, but you know, we wanted to get together and, you know, do a little follow up on the last, you know, session that we did. And then, you know, we want to also try to implement these more to talk about various things that we see happening right now within the music business and, you know, possibly down the line, other things that's going on in real time and all that stuff like that. So, you know, to all of those out there who actually did tune in and watch us live throughout, you know, these last two hours, we definitely want to say thank you. We do appreciate you. And I know we had one person try to call in earlier. You know, I saying he didn't get a chance to, you know, um, make his call through. But, you know, next time we'll definitely make sure we'll roll this thing out and let people know ahead of time that this is what we're doing. So, you know, we'll try to make this more scheduled and more planned going on, man. So, you know, we definitely want to say thank you to all of you once again who tuned in and rocked out with us for the last two hours and all that good stuff, man. This definitely makes for good content. So, you know, before we get up out of here, Devon, why don't you give them a little preview of what you got coming up next on For All Matters? Well, my next podcast is just going to be addressing the hate that I got, you know, Mm -hmm. on my... There was a live that I did, you know, with Kawan and all of that, and there was some hate from other platforms and everything like that. So, really, my next podcast is probably just going to be addressing that and addressing these platforms that don't take themselves seriously and they'd rather compete than build with others. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just addressing a little bit of that. Every once in a while, you got to spank the fucking haters. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that that's just addressing that. But, you know, I might actually air this one as, you know, a podcast in that time slot. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see, man. Like, we was only planning to go, like, what, maybe 45 minutes at best. It's right. Man, and it turned into a whole two-hour discussion. That's why I said, like... It always do. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, yo, like, hey, you know, time frame or whatever. Like, you know, we get on here, we'll say 45 minutes, but then it'll turn into, like, two hours. You know, and it's always real good content. So, you know, definitely want to say thank you to those of y'all out there. And, you know, we got another comment from the Lazarus. He said, thank you both. I got a lot to think about. And we thank you, too, Lazarus, for taking the time out to tune in and rock out yeah, with us for the last few minutes and all that good stuff, man. So, you know, before we get up out of yeah, here, you got any shouts or anything you want to, else you want to add? Yeah, for everybody listening, you can get at me at For All Matters Podcast at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Divine Thought TM. And you can catch For All Matters Podcast every Wednesday at 11.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NGI Radio. No doubt. And for everybody else out there, as y'all see it scrolling across the bottom of the screen, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Nonstop Radio 212 or at my personal Twitter at the MLEO Wack Bar to stay up to date with the latest news and highlights from your favorite hip hop shows. Favorite hip hop show. You can also check out the Nonstop Radio show live every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NGIRadio.com. Once again, that's NGI Radio. Dot com or download the free mobile app, which is available now for both iPhone and Android users worldwide. You can also send us your fan mail to nsr.fanmail at gmail.com or any submissions or requests or inquiries about how you can get onto this live stream. You can send me an email at let's network musically 212 at gmail.com. Once again, that's let's network musically 212 at gmail.com. We want to say shout out to our sponsors over there at Show Wellness. And we also want to encourage anybody out there to check out past and present episodes of the Nonstop Radio Show, which is available now on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash nonstop dash radio dash show. I'm your boy Emilio Wackball here with my man Devon Thought. We signing off for the evening. He said his piece, and I'm saying peace. And until next time, y'all all be safe out there. You heard? Peace. <laughs>